Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. And in Washington, on October the 11th, by a vote of 63 to 35, the U.S. Senate passed a bill that would punish countries that subsidize their exports by maintaining an artificially low exchange rate. The measure is not expected to either pass the U.S. House of Representatives or, if it does, be signed by President Obama. Now joining us to talk about the, what people are calling a possible coming currency war, currency war with China, at least if such a thing actually did pass, is Michael Hudson. Mike, Michael teaches economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you very much, Paul. So be, before we talk about the politics of, of, of this, because a lot of people are thinking this thing can't go very far, but, but let's say, um, what's the substance of it? Uh, what, to what extent does, is the U.S. economic woes caused because China's currency is uh, devalued? Zero. <laughs> That's a short yeah. answer. The United States uh, would like uh, to cripple China is if somehow, uh, if China would only raise its currency, this would uh, solve uh, America's trade deficit and balance of payments deficit. The largest element of America's balance of payments deficit is military. The other element is the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing that's given money, uh, 600 billion to the banks that have moved it all out to speculate abroad. So uh, the problem is that uh, the Americans are looking for a scapegoat and uh, quite frankly, it's racist against China. It has nothing to do with China's trade at all, uh, because uh, the balance of payments, the American companies are the main importers, and although the uh, ostensible trade account makes it appear as if America pays China a lot of money for the imports, China only gets a very small proportion of, these, uh, of this price. So it's based on junk economics, it's based on junk statistics, and it's based on let's blame somebody else and distract attention from the fact that uh, uh, the government's policies, both of the Obama administration and the Bush administration, uh, have been pushing uh, the dollar down uh, against foreign currencies. So uh, the Senate proposal is illegal under all international law. Uh, the Chinese people I've spoken to, and I discussed this at length in Beijing, uh, the feeling there is, let them try. Uh, even if the United States tries to impose tariffs, uh, it takes years and years and years uh, for a lawsuit to get through the uh, World Trade Organization uh, legal thing. The United States would be acting illegally, and the result would be to right. plunge the dollar against every other currency. But what do you make of the... Of the argument. Let, let's say this isn't the reason for the woes of the economic, uh, economic crisis in the United States, and, and, and if they achieve this, it wouldn't be that big a solution. But if that's the case, does that, but do you think China is sort of, you know, some manipulative way artificially keeping the currency down, and does that make Chinese products unduly more competitive in the United States, and does that cost any jobs here? No. Uh, to all of those answers. China has not been keeping the country's the currency down. What happens is it's being flooded with U.S. dollars, just as uh, other countries. Uh, Brazil is being flooded. Uh, Russia is being flooded. Other countries are being flooded with dollars. And as long as the backing of international reserves is held in loans to the U.S. Treasury, when the private uh, exporters or recipients of dollars in China get these dollars, they turn them over to the central bank for domestic uh, uh, RMB. And the uh, government then, with these dollars, does just what governments uh, throughout the world, from Saudi Arabia and the Arab countries to others have done. They, uh, there's nothing central banks can do but invest them in treasury bills. Uh, what they wanted to do was spend the dollar in the United States. The Senate and the U.S. government illegally, has told China, you can't buy companies here. We can buy you out, but you can't buy us out. We have a double standard. Yellow people cannot buy into America. This is a racist standard. You know, I hate to put it so bluntly, but this is how it's perceived abroad. They say, wait a minute, you mean Arab countries can buy, uh, use their dollars to buy U.S. companies? You won't let China buy filling stations here? You won't let us buy uh, any a company that you say it's national security, and you say it's a national security drain just because we're Chinese? I mean, what kind of, there's no law in 
the world courts that permits America to say, we'll sell to anybody except the Chinese. Right. Now, if you, if you look at the business pages about all of this, there's a debate going on, and you kind of hear both sides of this. But the side that's talking about uh, the, the need for some kind of pressure on China is saying this is sort of the opening shot, but if something doesn't happen by 2015, 2016, they're saying, you could be into real currency wars. So how did, well, how did the Chinese respond to this? Because even, whether the argument has merit or not wouldn't, doesn't mean there aren't political forces in the United States that might not push this through. Well, the Chinese have, said, have indeed, uh, two years ago at, in, in Russia at uh, Yekaterinburg, the Chinese worked with the Russian, the other BRIC countries, Russia, Brazil, and India, to say, look, uh, America is going nationalist and uh, I won't say fascist, but it's going ultra-protectionist, ultra-nationalistic. We've got to get an alternative to the dollar. We don't want to hold treasury bills, partly because we don't want to fund America's military bases all over the world. That's really what the dollar issue is. Do uh, other countries want to pay for America to encircle them militarily? Well, so, so, say, far, so far the answer to that is yes, because the dollar. they're not buying not any less America's treasury saying, bills America's or American dollars. They're all buying it and continue to buy it. Uh, that's right. And they're looking for an alternative. They say, we want to hold our reserves in something other than dollars. We don't want to have any more loans to the U.S. government. That's what, how the U.S. Treasury defines uh, currency manipulation, using your dollar inflows to uh, buy treasury bonds. And China and Russia, Brazil say, okay, let's see, America won't sell us our, our industry. The Chinese, uh, I discussed the following proposal in Beijing. Let them use their dollars, if they can't buy out American companies, to buy out American ownership of the Chinese companies at book value. So the Chinese will say, okay, uh, you won't let us uh, buy into American industry. We're going to buy out uh, what you own in China at the price you paid and the normal rate of return. Uh, and uh, you'll have the dollars back and uh, we're finished. Let's let the foreign exchange markets do just what the Senate wants. Let's have a free market in foreign exchange uh, and trade. Uh, but we're going to use the dollars we have uh, we're not going to just let you say, ha ha, we won't pay, we've given you pieces of paper and you can't do anything with them. We're going to uh, actually spend them in America, which will support your currency. Uh, and uh, that basically is what their plan is. So uh, if America is, act is planning on acting illegally and thinking it can push the rest of the world, the rest of the world now can draw the line and say, this is it, this is finished, the American century is over now. Well, we'll see if they can say that. There's been, there's been a lot of predictions of the death of the American century over the last few years. And as I said, so far, everyone's still buying T-bills and American dollars. It's this idea, this sort of role the United States plays as managing global capitalism. Uh, they, as much as they talk about wanting to separate from it, China, Russia, and the other countries seem too dependent on that role to really break with it. I don't think they're dependent on it at all. The U.S. press has misrepresented the situation. Uh, they're trying to defend themselves against the dollar outflow. Uh, most of the dollars that go out, you know, are not on trade account. Most of the dollars that leave America are by banks trying to flee the country, like rats fleeing a ship. Wall Street knows that the game is over. They're trying to get out of the U.S. market, and they're trying to put their money wherever uh, they can do it outside of the U.S., that's why gold was going up. That's why silver prices were going up. People are dumping the dollar mainly from America. And the rest of the world is trying to prevent itself from this huge uh, flood of uh, dollars trying to find a safe haven now that Wall Street uh, thinks that uh, Obama is going to succeed in lowering wages by 30 percent and bringing on a depression. That's the Washington program. They're deliberately bringing on a depression here to fight uh, against labor, basically. And uh, other countries realize that uh, there's no reason to hold dollars anymore for a country that's committing economic suicide. All right, thanks for joining us, Michael. Thanks. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.